All right, so when you open Blender, you're going to see an interface something like this. It may be different if you're using a different version. Uh, this is your 3D view. Now we want to use the video editor, so we go up to the top menu bar here, and we go video editing. And this was up to the video editor. Um, this is your animation screen, which you will probably won't have anything in. This is your uh, preview viewport, and this is the timeline down here. So we will go ahead and hit add and movie. And I believe I have some kind of a movie here. So we'll add this. Um, and now this movie has only picture. There's no audio. So we have the different frames that come in. Mouse wheel to scroll in and out. Cl uh, click with the center wheel to pan throughout. Or I believe you can scrub with the, or not scrub, but pan with the middle mouse wheel and the control button. Shift will take you up and down the, the height of it to change your frames because you're going to have to change this to go however long it is. Um, you can do math in here. So if it is a two hour, we would have two times 60 seconds. Or what am I saying? Two times 60 for your two hours times 60 for your seconds times 30 for your frame rate. And you're looking at 216,000 frames. I do not need something that long. So I'm going to drop this down to 1,000 for this example. So here we have one audio clip or video clip rather. And we'll add another movie. And it looks like this one again is only picture. There is no audio. So say the audio is a separate file, as I'm assuming is the case here. We will do add sound. And that's a sound strip I have. It will draw waveform if you go on the side panel here and click draw waveform. There we go. Uh, if you do not see that side panel, the letter N on the keyboard will open and close it. Zoom in and out with the mouse wheel here. This window, like I said, you probably won't use. Um, you can, whoops, if you center or left click rather on that dividing line, you can join area and get a wider editing video preview screen. You can use the normal clicking to get rid of your title bar there and to resize your timeline. You can zoom in and out on the timeline. How does that work again? Um, Alt, I think. Nope, Alt pulls up something else. Somehow you can zoom in on that. I don't remember how, though. Outside of just zooming like this, like, to make the the things taller. Um, Let's see, what else do we need to go over? How to do the fades. I don't know why this doesn't... Oh, because I'm selecting two things. The letter A will select everything and deselect. Letter G will let you move everything. I accidentally just deleted everything. I don't know how I did that. Nope, I just moved them up channels. Okay, so we want to move this. For some reason, it really doesn't want to move. Well, not moves. Uh, probably because it's trying to preview those images. Okay, so it might get a little laggy at that huge resolution. Ah, uh, you know what? Because I forgot to set this. We would want to set this to, what was our resolution on that? 3840 by 1920, was it? And then in the 3 view, letter A on the keyboard to select everything, X to delete. And then you would just end up clicking animation when you're ready to render it. Output here, wherever you want to save it to. You would change it to, I'm assuming, H.264. Shove in your encoder presets. I usually just do H.264 and then throw values in, but do what you need. Make sure you turn some audio on. And then, um, what is that one under? Post-processing, make sure sequencer is checked. It should be, you can turn off compositor. If there's nothing in there, it won't run anyways. To do the fade, which is the one thing we wanted to do. Uh, you know, I'm gonna just eliminate that strip for right now. We can cut with, I believe, shift C. Does it hard cut? Control C, not, nope. Nope, let me pull it up. Uh, first, to resize the strip, you just left click and drag on those little arrows. You can duplicate a strip if you want to duplicate it with shift D. Um, but to cut it, it would be under strip. Oh, it's just the letter K. That's all it is, just the letter K. We'll cut a strip. And then you can delete it with the delete key. Um, to put a fade in here, we just select two strips. We add effect, cross, 
and then zoom out on this a little bit so we can see what's going on here. And we have that moving over. We do a crossfade. And I guess we're crossfading to black. Yep. So that is how you do a simple crossfade. Hopefully this helps out. And thanks for watching.